Parker. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. If we get a roll call, please, Sherry. Jason Keo. Here. Rick Knotts. Here. Ashley Pesquel. Here. Robert Smith. Here. Chuck Vaughn. Scott Welty. Here. Mark Z. Here. And Lauren Vetter. Here. All right. And open up to call to the public. State your name. It's been a while since I've been here. Good evening. My name is David Rossing. I live at 2045 Papago Lane here in Lake Havasu City. I am the president of the Lake Havasu City Pickleball Association, and I'm here to speak about pickleball, and it relates to upcoming funding. Uh, two years ago, the city funded four courts that were completed in April of this last year at Dick Samp Park. And those were done 100% uh, with city money. <coughs> the city spent money on site development for Dick Samp Park for a commitment of 16 courts up there. And <coughs> four, as I said, have been completed. The city uh, manager and the former mayor made public statements that they would build eight courts with lights at Dick Samp Park. And they built the first four, but the last four, uh, the funding was not there because of the, the requirement of the state law for limit on the amount of expenditures. <coughs> The mayor also made it clear when in our discussions about those four courts that the city front loaded the cost of those courts 100%. And he expected that the Pickleball Association would come forward with money uh, to bring to the table to build the next four courts. <clears throat> to date, uh, we have put in approximately $8,000 worth of enhancements at Dick Samp Park. Those included windscreening, uh, gravel around the border of the courts. It included benches and it included sunshades. Currently, our sister organization, uh, Lake Havasu Courts, a 501c3 organization, has $50,000 in its coffers ready to bring to the table for the next four courts. So what we're hoping for from the Recreation and Arts, excuse me, the Parks and Recreation Commission is that uh, you recognize that we have a commitment to honor what the city challenged us to do and that we hope that in your considerations and recommendations uh, to the council that you will include the cost of those courts and lights in the next, uh, in this next CIP budgeting process. So I'm happy to answer any questions if you choose. Go ahead. Mr. Keene, will this be discussed at all during your CIP update? Uh, slightly, and, and I believe that's, uh, there's another member of the association that'll be speaking during that time as well. Okay, thank you. All right, anybody else have any other questions? All right, anybody else from the public? Okay, moving on. Approval of the November 26 minutes. Mr. Chair? Yes. I move to approve the minutes of the November 26 meeting. All right. Second. And seconded. All right. Thank you. 
All right, moving on to communications announcements and, oh, yeah, sorry, moving a little faster. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, there we go. All right, now moving on to communications announcements and staff report, Mr. King. Well, first I'd like to introduce our new student member uh, to our Parks and Recreation Advisory Board. Miss Lauren Vetter. And Lauren, do you want to say a little bit about yourself and what brought you to join our board? Um, I'm 16 years old and I'm a sophomore at Lake Havasu High School and I just wanted to be more involved and kind of have someone representing teens, you know. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Well, thank you and thank you for taking your time and doing this. We appreciate it. Okay, um, to start the staff report, uh, we've received a few donations uh, over the last month, and I'd like to recognize those groups that donated uh, to assist the children locally with recreation and aquatics programs. We received $5,000 from the Firefighters Charity, $4,000 from the Elks Lodge Youth Grant Program, $500 from Relics and Rods, and f as well as $500 from Mount Olive Church. So greatly appreciate those. those most of the uh, will go into our scholarship fund to uh, pay for children uh, that for our after school program and our camp programs that parents may not be able to afford uh, to send them. So great program opportunities there. Uh, we currently have 125 youth registered in our youth basketball program. We still have room for third through sixth grade girls. Unfortunately, the boys are full. So if uh, any of the girls out there, third through sixth grade, would like to play, please stop by the Aquatic Center and register. There are currently 117 children registered in our youth camp, uh, or, or sorry, in our winter break camp, uh, which will be starting next week uh, and run Wednesday, Thursday, Friday next week and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday the following week. Uh, the Elks Lodge also hosted a hoop shoot at the Aquatic Center for the after school program on December 13th, where 90 children showed off their free throw shooting abilities. Uh, it was a neat competition, so thank you to the Elks Club. As well, then there was a free community dur dinner last Friday night where we served uh, approximately 1,150 dinners. Uh, there was over 600 uh, meals served at the first seating and approximately 550 at the second seating. The Aquatic Center will be closed on Christmas Day as well as New Year's Day. There has been additional open swim times have been added um, while the students are out of school, so please check the website or call the Aquatic Center for exact um, pool schedules. The next session of swim lessons will begin January 7th and will run through January 30th. The Havasu Stingray swim team will be hosting a meet January 25th, 26th, and 27th couple of upcoming events at the community center. Buddy the Elf is having a cookie decorating party at the community center on December 20th at 5.30 p.m. The Arizona Collectibles and Firearm Show will be December 29th and 30th. The Blood Drive will be January 8th through the 10th. And the Educational Tour Group Pasta Dinner will be January 19th. Uh, out in the parks, you'll start seeing some of the renovation of the bathroom project getting started. Uh, so you, when, if you notice that, uh, that activity going on, that's, that's what is happening both in Rotary Park as well as in London Bridge Beach Park. With that, I'll take any questions. Any questions? Um, since you just mentioned that bathroom project, is there any... Um, date for as completion if i remember right it was a six month project are, are those replacements or renovation there is one new uh, restroom that will be replacing the restroom nearest the ball fields in the rotary park and the rest will be renovations a bulk of the project is uh, refurbishing the sewer lines in the parks as well as the lift stations um, to get all that out to our uh, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, so that's a big po po portion of the project. Any 
anyone else? All right. Thank you, Mr. King. Moving on to public hearings. Discussion of the CIP update. Okay, I just want to refresh the group a little bit uh, of our projects. Uh, we we submitted six projects uh, from the Parks and Recreation Department as part of the annual CIP process. Uh, they were the Aquatic Community Center renovation, Aquatic Center HVAC project, the Aquatic and Community Center thermal storage project, Sarah Park ball field improvements project, the Dick Samp Pickleball Courts and Parking Improvements Project, and the Mesquite Park Restrooms and Shade Structures. Uh, last meeting, uh, the board did ask for copies of those initial sheets. Um, they are there. I will take caution with uh, some of the pricing uh, that is noted in there has been adjusted and will continue to be adjusted as our engineers look at those. Um, as, uh, as Some additions are just simply um, the construction management costs are not listed there and the engineering our engineers will add those those fees to that so the the price on that that you see uh, will be some adjustments made there as well as to the years that the projects uh, would re could or would receive funding um, again based on availability uh, there were over 50 projects submitted uh, from all the, the departments in the city, ranging from fire station improvements, police station improvements, courthouse improvements, road projects, wash projects, water and wastewater improvements, as well as airport improvements. So as you can see, our six projects will stand up uh, against some stiff competition in, in those other projects that are, that are out there. Um, each project is ranked uh, throughout 16 categories. Some of those categories include legal mandate, public health and safety, the operating cost impact to the city's general fund, the economic impact to the city itself, uh, the percentage of population benefiting, environmental impact, and project costs. Uh, today, we actually had a CIP working meeting um, at, at three o'clock, so I just kind of came straight from that meeting to over here uh, in hopes that I'd have a ton of information to give you guys. Uh, I have some, not a ton, uh, but the working group met today. Really, our goal was to evaluate and make recommendations to the rankings of each of those projects. Um, so we did that. Um, there was some changes that, that we felt needed to be made. Uh, mostly so that all the projects were, were being seen from the same point of view. Uh, and so that was what, good to have that working group together. Uh, those scores are now being adjusted um, based off of our, our recommendations to the, to the working group. Um, and those scores will then come out and show the priority of the projects um, and how they, how they all fall. At that point, engineering, or currently engineering, uh, will be verifying those cost estimates. Again, those are on your sheets there. Uh, and then finance will identify the amount of funding that is available and which years uh, that funding might fit those projects. Uh, their goal there is to have that information uh, back in about a month um, to be able to, to proceed in the next step of the process. Um, so it's a little bit of a review and recap of, of what the projects were. Um, again, we're still early in this process of, of identifying the, the amount of funding and, and which projects would be able to be accomplished um, of our six um, out of that 50. So, um, so Mr. Chair, I, I do wish I, I would have a ton more information for you. I, I, I just don't at this point. Uh, but with that, I'll take any questions. Are your projects numbered um, I, in any way or... No. They are not in, in okay. any sort of priority okay. as they're in your packets. Okay. Thank I have you. a few questions, mm -hmm. Chairman. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any idea what the total CIP budget's going to be for next fiscal year? We have not heard that yet, no. Okay. Um, is, is there a precedent for the percentage of the total CIP budget that would be earmarked for Parks and Rec or any? No, it's not really uh, divvied up that way. It's uh, just kind of based on those scores and, and then the amount of funding that would be available. Okay, uh, and one more question. The, um, the projects that we have listed here, 
I, I can see that, that it looks like funds are allocated toward certain fiscal years. Is that like at what level of fidelity are, are those numbers as allocated in in fiscal year? Um, again, I think it depends on how much money is available in, in the forecast of predicting them years to years. The reason that it's in that spread out with that some of those projects when you get into um, street uh, street repairs could take three years. So it's which year do you fund for um, you know the engineering study to be done, the, the, the actual asphalt to be laid. Um, some projects roll into each other. Um, I'll use the example of the washes, the wash stabilization. So it'll be one year into the next of which wash is being done. So I think that's really why you see them laid out in year to year. Um, again, we'll allow our finance department to, to kind of determine how much money is available for next year and, and then the forecast of where some of our projects might be able to fit in. Anybody else? Yes, go ahead. I think I have two questions. One is just a specific question about the um, Dick Samp pickleball courts. And in the description, it says um, demand has risen for the next set of courts to be built. How many courts? Is it four? There would be four more in the next set, yes. So that's what's included in that cost estimate then and the parking lots that's described? Correct. Okay. And then does the city council approve the CIP budget as a multi-year plan or is it only year to year and the multi-years are just to show the plan? Correct. They, they can only, city council can only approve by state law one year budget. One year. So, I'm sorry, one more if I can. Okay. So, for example, the aquatic community center renovation that's on the first page is out a couple of years. You're looking at fiscal year 2023 the 22, 23 years, so they, this wouldn't even really be considered at this time in the budget? Not as far as the budget goes. Um, it could, again, rise up depending on how much available. If, if our finance department thought there'd be more available funds this particular year than in 2023, possibility of moving that around uh, does exist. Thank you. Well, nice presentation. Um, it looks like uh, you're generous towards the Sarah Park project for next year, which is cool. And and the sum of things, it looks like you'd be able to get most of these done for next year, you know, the ones that are for 1920, but. It just really depends on what the funding sources are. Right, right, of course. If you were to pick a couple or one to drop off of the 1920 uh, years, uh, 2019 to 2020, um, which one would they be? Would you guess? I guess I really didn't look at it in those years forms. I was just looking at it as overall six projects um, that, that we do need all six of them to, to be accomplished. I think that's the recommendation that, I, that I've received in the, the um, agreement of, of the board of, of what you guys think was kind of the priorities uh, moving forward in our next set of projects. Well, thanks. Uh, okay, so I want to talk about the the uh, Dick Samp project. Um, the hundred and fifty thousand dollars here. I know you said that that, that w w we ought not focus, um, specific, you know, on the numbers just yet. But um, does that does that number take into account the fact that the that the association is is going to kick in what they um, stated as fifty thousand dollars? That number does not take into account that. Um, again, that number will adjust. Um, in, in the pretty picture over there, you see a very nice paved parking lot, and um, there's some, you know, obviously some conversations of, of um, some cost reductions if we just do, um, you know, a road-based material there versus actually pavement. Um, so some additional ways to, to maybe save some cost there. Um, that estimate was based off of what um, the city spent to build the first four courts. Is the current parking there blacktop or road base? Um, the current is blacktop, uh, and it is very insufficient for the, the programs that currently go on. So if we were to add anything else, I would definitely be an advocate of pushing for, for additional parking. Uh, 
what the the verbiage here mentions parking. H how many spaces are are we considering? Um, I guess add. I haven't looked into exactly how much to add um, for for that next next set. Um, again, it, I think it'll be looked at as okay. How much further are we moving um, into this project? Uh, if if all the courts are to be built out, the two additional baseball courts, is it more advantageous to build the full parking lot now and capture that at today's expenses versus um, when, when we expand in the future to, to use that cost? Okay. Well, uh, so the, it sounds to me like the scope for, for at least for this project, still is still kind of wide open. A little bit, yes. Okay. Uh, are so the next round you said was in January or in about a month, and um, will we will we have another opportunity, another opportunity to weigh in? Will, will we have more fidelity on the scope of of these projects? Um, yeah, we'll have a, a better understanding of, of some true costs uh, once the engineering firm goes through or engineering department goes through, um, puts a a little bit more fine tuned pencil to the paper of what those those projects would will cost. Um, and then, yeah, we'll definitely bring them back here and, and have you guys discuss uh, before it's sent to council. Um, I'd also like to say that I like that you were diverse in your selection for improvements across the Parks and Rec. Good job. Any other questions? Yes. Yes, Ms. Pascual. <laughs> So I want my first question is just so I understand the process a little bit more. When this goes to the city council at their retreat, that's when these items are first kind of discussed, right? They they will see a portion of them. There'll be some uh, some questions, some direction um, asked After of them. After it's kind of filtered down to what the recommendation from city staff is. Correct. Of, yeah. of really of what the budget will look like. Okay. And then is there any kind of negotiating or s selling, you know, Shark Tank style <laughs> pitching, that's the word I'm looking for, of projects? Um, I, de I definitely hope that we, we receive some guidance and, and, and some direction from, from council on which, what projects are important to them. Um, it might not be necessarily Shark Tank style, uh, <laughs> but, but definitely some direction of, you know, obviously some of the infrastructure is very important but can can that be, you know, maintained in a different way or pushed off in a different way to fund other projects as well? Mm -hmm. I just I really like that I wasn't aware of the investment that the Lake Havasu Courts Association, no, the five hundred one c three that was mentioned had sort of put that up as a to leverage the funding from the city's budget, and I wonder if that same approach might be helpful with the Sarah Park. Um, improvements because um, that's a big big ticket and there are mul there's multiple sporting organizations that can get use from that in addition to the whole community so I just wonder if that's an opportunity to come together and kind of follow the example that was set yeah. any other questions chair yes go ahead um, so we are having the retreat and um, personally um, all the council members are going to meet with a consultant before the retreat to go in and discuss with with her I believe it's a female isn't it and and tell her what our thoughts are on the different boards that we sit on and interests. so I'm asking this board if you guys are comfortable with everything on this if you have some priorities on this that I can bring to her before the retreat Oh, can we take a short recess, please? Yeah. Ah, just joking. I guess, again, going back to Sarah Park and something that we kind of thought was in the works already to, you know, make that a fairly high priority just because we, you know, kind of were in the, idea that it was already going or going to be going or had the funding and stuff so I would 
be mine. Chair, Chairman, uh, um, since, um, since Mike, um, Mr. Keene doesn't have the projects numbered quite yet, this might be an idea. Maybe we could put numbers to the projects with our opinions as to what goes first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth, and then they could look at it. And his suggestion. And again, I guess throwing my two cents in on this, the aquatic center being as old as it is, used as much as it is, you know, has to fall in there pretty high too. Um, as far as the uh, renovation and AC work. I'm willing to throw my top three out there as well. Um, Sarah Park, I, I completely agree with the chairman that that's a long-term um, vision that I think all of us had and to keep seeing progress made towards that is important. And I also think that the community can come together to support that too and do fundraising or whatever would be whatever it would take. And I totally agree about the aquatic center as well, starting with the heat issue, the, I'm sorry, what's it called? Yes, because that's just adds, that's a great benefit to our community, but I do know that's the one the largest reason that people don't take advantage of it is because how hot and muggy it is inside there. And then I think Dick Stamp is well on its way and with the resources, again, being leveraged from what the community has raised. Move forward on that. Those are my top three. Mr. Keel. Yeah, I have a question for uh, uh, Board Member Pasquale. Are you talking about the HVAC improvement at the aquatic center or the thermal storage at the aquatic center as one of your top three i see why you're asking because the other one isn't in the budget until 2021 20, again don't put too much stock in those years <laughs> okay I, I was talking about the hvac um, but I see the discrepancy there. So I still stand by my priority, though. We can move that to 19 and 20. Okay, that's why I just wanted to make sure that you were talking about the, the not the thermal. Yeah, not the thermal storage part. The, that the HVAC, the $2.8 million one would be in your top three and not the $250,000. The $1.8 million? Yes, but I think that the other, um, the thermal storage, doesn't one support the other? You you would want that to help offset the cost of the new HVAC system. Yeah, the the thermal storage is really it's going to help uh, col the solar panels that are on the roof of the aquatic center, which heat our the pool water as well as the domestic hot water. It's going to give another a larger holding capacity to that heat, uh, so that when we can collect all the heat during the day. In theory, the glycol would still stay warm overnight when they went to turn on the showers in the morning. Uh, oh. We would still be utilizing that same energy from the sun from the day before. I see. So that's only for warming the water. Correct. Oh, okay. So the, what you were talking about more with the comfort in the yes. in the pool area would be the HVAC system. Yes. Anybody else have any input on this? Uh, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Those are the exact same order for my, my top three would be the same, in that same order. I think with Dick Samp, should be pretty high. While we have this 50000 that the uh, 501c3 raised, we should take advantage of that. Perfect. So. Thank you. Mr. Chair. So um, my opinion would be um, number one would be the thermal storage. And number two would be the uh, Dick Stamp um, pickleball courts because the, we have public appearance on that. We also have, you know, um, donations to pay for it, like you said. And the number three, <clears throat> Sarah Park, definitely on the list. And then I threw a number four out there 
Mesquite Park restroom. Sometimes I find myself needing that in the middle of the day, so <laughs> tease. <laughs> Those are my top four. Yes. Go ahead. Thank you. I would like to see the number one project be the ballparks because they were approved last March. And we thought they were on the list already, and then it got jerked back. So I would like that one and the pickleball course to be one and two. That's for the whole community. So there you go. Mr. Key. I don't believe we can just say my favorite, you know, yeah. one, two, and three. Um, uh, can we do it like a motion, like for a number one, maybe? If so, I'd like to make a motion. I think if Michelle is just looking for some inform, or Council Member Lynn is just looking for some information, it doesn't need to be in a in a voted format. <laughs> and if I may, it sounds like there is some consensus on the top three, maybe in different orders, but hopefully that's helpful for you as you liaison. <laughs> and if that's the way we're going to do it, I'll go ahead and spout my top three would be Sarah Park, the pickleball courts and the HVAC project at the Aquatic Center. Lauren, do you have an opinion? Um, I like the Sarah Park project. I have a question and I don't know if it can be discussed at the, with this agenda topic so if you can't just tell me but I just was thinking about uh, gifting funds for projects and even though the expenditure limitation was in raised I still believe that if the city brings in funds it still counts towards that and I didn't know how that all works and if you have thought about that um, especially with the Dick Samp project and um, if that's the process of how it goes, or is it sort of an agreement on you buy this pro this part of the project and we'll cover this part? If that makes sense. Um, the majority of the times the city foots the bill, so it would still be our expenditure, and then the the organization would make a donation to the city. Uh, it just makes it a little bit cleaner in insurance and liability routes. Any other ideas, input? All right, and since this is public hearing, call to the public. Mr. Carr. My name is Doug Carr, and uh, I reside here at 89 Southwestern Lane. Uh, and I like pickleball as the number one priority, uh, only because, I mean, it's only $100,000 out of the city's pocket. You know, you're talking Sarah Park is, you know, $20 million, you know, build out. So I, I know they put a mon money in there, and it was in the CIP budget last year. Pickleball wasn't, only because they told us they couldn't, didn't want to put it in there because of the expenditure limitation. Well, now it's not. So, and it's good that it's, it's on the board. I don't know what year y you guys see. I don't, I'm not privy to the, the year of when they think pickleball is going to be built. But it should be built uh, July 1, the first day of uh, the new budget. <laughs> because, I mean, you're, you're only talking a little bit of money. And this is something we need. I mean, we had, it was a lousy day out there. There were probably 70 people playing pickleball throughout the city. Now, we had over 35 at Dick Samp, and I don't know if the aquatic was open or not. Uh, and the church had probably 24, and then uh, Los Lagos, I heard, had 12 to 15 people there playing, and they're four little courts. So we need pickleball courts. I mean, for six months a year, I mean, Dick Samp is being 
you know, use quite a bit. And granted, there are times where there's nobody and we're not going to use eight courts, but I mean, you've got baseball fields that don't be used all week long, you know, so, uh, and uh, it's just terrible that we don't have more courts. Uh, Bullhead City's got another eight going, uh, and they're talking about 20 in indoor ones. And, you know, all the other courses are building 24 in other cities in, in Arizona. Uh, so pickleball, is, it's a fast growing and it's a fun sport. Uh, so anyways, as soon as I'm glad we're getting on the, the budget and I know if we don't get it this year, we're going to get it next year, but we should just get it now. You know, then you guys don't have to, I'll still be here coming and supporting you, but you know, you won't be, I'm not going to be bugging you because I come to all the city and we had a meeting the other day with the manager and he couldn't commit to being put on the budget, but it needs to be put on the budget. And, and built right away, I mean, because we can use them. And it's only 100,000 instead of, you know, I think HVAC was uh, 2 million or a million eight or something you guys were talking about. So anyways, 100,000, and then granted the parking lot, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, you know we can't, we only got so much money. So, and I know that I, I said, well, we could use gravel, that's fine until we get more. And there's two more ballparks gonna be built up there too. And I don't know when that would be. I don't know what their, I think last month they had a big tournament. They wish they had two more parks. But, uh, and I know Sarah Park is, is built for, build it, they will come. Well, pickleball is here. So please do. And then we can bring people in too if we had more, more courts for more tournaments too. So that's all I got to say. Any questions? You guys want to change your vote now? Thank you. I know we just we did do the needs assessment, which was where we got our number for the ball fields need, need, needed in town. So again, that was something that that was uh, done and passed on to us. So again, Correct. I guess that's where the Sarah Park project comes into priority. Yeah, that was done well, at least three, four years ago, I think. Uh, and pickleball wasn't in that. And I wish they would have put it in, but they didn't put pickleball. And granted, you guys do need uh, baseball fields with fences. The ones uh, over there by Rotary, Rotary don't have fences, so if people go over there and play and hit the ball, they can run and run and run. You know, unless they're old, then it takes a little while. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Carter. Anybody else have any input or questions on this Chair? matter? Yes, ma'am. I have a question for Mike, and I don't know if we can talk about it on, on this topic or not. But there was some discussion quite a few months ago about the strip of property below the aquatic center up from Rotary. Can you discuss if there's any talk on what they were going to do with that? Uh, we have some, definitely have some ideas. Uh, we just haven't got to the um, build stage yet. Again, looking at budgets and, and, and where that would fall. Um, but it, it wouldn't fall to the, the right of a CIP project. Anybody else? All right, moving on. Wow, look at that. Future agenda items. Anybody have anything? Follow up to our meeting tonight. They finish their gathering and then we'll get some information from that to build on. So then to follow up on the CIP. Okay, thank you, Mr. Smith. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Keogh. Uh, I'd like to hear about teen break when we meet in January. And Mr. then, C, uh, go ahead. Um, a refresh, um, maybe there was a date we discussed, uh, we we're gonna do a tour possibly through the water system, or do we just volunteer over at, at her office by ourselves? wasn't yeah I was looking to see if she had anything had, had been scheduled and um, so I was gonna wait to to get this group together but yeah that's still in the in the works all right anything else all right future meetings right 
We have January 28th, 2019 scheduled and February 25th, 2019. Both here at six. Okay. All right. With Mr. Kyo. I'd like to make a motion. We adjourn. Second. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you.